Hey you guys, welcome back. First, I want to thank all of you for bearing with me as I kind of completed my moving process and getting settled in the new house. I'm finally here. Things are not quite done. I still obviously need to get drapes installed in certain areas or window treatments in this example. Um, I need so much furniture. I haven't even really started on that. I've ordered things, but they're not here yet. My couch is gonna be done for two months. I mean, it just, the process takes forever. Um, but things are, I'm getting settled. Things are getting organized. Um, and I finally have time to jump back into creating content for YouTube and some of my other channels. And one of the things that's easy for me to do now on YouTube is do a Q and A because while I wanna do lots of home tours and beauty tutorials and stuff, I feel like it'll be so much more fun when um, I have everything completed in these rooms, for example. Um, just a prettier, a prettier backdrop. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna do a Q&A. I asked all of my readers, followers on Snapchat and on Insta stories to send me questions, any type of questions, um, really covering every topic. And I've gotten a lot, I don't even know how many this is, but I wrote them all down. So I hope you'll bear with me with that when I'm reading them and going through these pages. But in some of these cases, I'll try and take you into the closet to show you things. But please note, I'm not very good at this and moving around with my little tripod thing isn't the easiest. So I'll try and keep it as steady as possible. But let's see, the first question is, what's the best fall staple you can't live without? For me, it's gotta be some kind of leather or faux leather pants or leggings. Um, I pretty much strictly wear those jeans of course I wear those but I just find that the look of kind of a slick leather or faux leather um, legging or pant just instantly dresses up a look they look great with suede boots they look great dressed up with heels for a night out you can wear them to work if it's fitted appropriately um, but I just I think they're so chic I think they look really expensive even if they're not even if they're the faux leather kind I have some of some of either, um, or some of both actually. Uh, but I, I really love them and most of them are black, which makes them ultimately very flattering. So definitely get yourself a pair of leather or faux leather leggings this fall. Let's see, did you use a designer for your interiors or did you conceptualize it on your own? So yes to both. Um, I used a designer, her name is Maddie, Maddie Hughes. Um, and she's been so much fun to work with. Her ideas have been wonderful. Um, but with that said, I definitely went into it knowing what I wanted. I knew I wanted a very light and bright space, that I wanted a lot of white furniture. Um, I knew I wanted gold hardware, but she's been so helpful in helping me find the right fabrics and actually how to incorporate the pieces into my space. Um, I'm so visually inept, it's ridiculous. I can't like <laughs> place things, I would be a terrible engineer. Um, but she's so great at that. And for example, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about um, adding some art in my living room and she pointed out something that I never would have even thought would look weird, but totally made sense when she said it. It's just things like that that are really great to have a designer there who's worked in a lot of spaces and she's been in my house a bunch now so she knows my space she knows my taste um and another benefit to working with a designer is access to trade only businesses like fabric showrooms or furniture showrooms a lot of the design district places here um will only work directly with a designer anyway so in order for me to get access to kind of unique fabrics nice fabrics um instead of just going to a run-of-the-mill fabric shop is to work with the designer and she's been really great and helpful and we go there a lot. We go to the design district a lot to pick out fabrics. So um, I've really enjoyed working with Maddie Hughes. You should check her out. I'll include a link below in the text. Um, and if I feature anything else that I'm able to link to, I'll do that as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, <clears throat> somebody said, I have a daughter built a lot, a lot like you, tall with long legs. It's hard to find dresses that are age appropriate that aren't too flashy. Any brands you recommend? Yes, okay, so probably the two that stick out the most, that seem the most age appropriate, um, that have really worked well for me are Rebecca Taylor. I love, love their pieces, um, very feminine. 
um, flattering. A lot of them are um, fitted at the waist and flare out, which is kind of my favorite silhouette, a fit and flare. Um, and then Kate Spade. So both of those are great options for dresses or skirts that she's looking to wear. I know you mentioned, I didn't include this in the question, but um, whoever sent this in mentioned Rush, rushing for a sorority next year. So those are some good options. But what's great is the midi, the midi skirt trend is still popular. So definitely consider looking at Tibby, um, Parker. Let's see what else, who else is doing that? Tori Birch. Um, a number of people are doing longer styles right now because it is kind of the trend. So um, just take a look everywhere, but definitely age appropriate would be Kate Spade and Rebecca Taylor. All right. Um, what is your hands down favorite pair of jeans? That's sort of a tricky one because I have like four favorites. I'm sure you guys are the same where you have um, like a favorite black pair and a favorite blue pair and a favorite distressed pair. They're all just a little bit different, but the, my favorite shape of all time is a high waist skinny. Um, the brands that work best for me that are the longest have been J brand. I love the J brand Maria style, which is what I'm wearing now. You can't can't really see it and I can't back up far enough for you too, but um, the J brand Maria is great. The Hudson Barbara is really great. Um, I got the mother, it's not the insider, it's like the mother high-waisted something something skinny. Um, they're ripped ones, you've seen them in outfit posts before, but those are really great. And then J Crew Factory has amazing high-rise skinnies. So if you're looking for something on a budget, do that because I have three pairs and I wear them often. Um, but I hope that wasn't too long-winded of an answer for that. I didn't narrow it down to one, but I like all, all of those. Um, what's it like to be a homeowner? Have you gotten used to the noise? So if you don't follow me on Snapchat, I have complained a couple times about hearing new noises in my place. I'm just not used to it. Um, I'm used to having two fans, one on the ceiling and one in the room, and I've decided not to do that because I'm gonna have a chandelier on my ceiling and then I'm going to not have a fan because they can kind of look tacky sometimes. <laughs> so I want my room to be very pretty and spacious and um, just no clutter. Um, and so the first few nights at my place, I kept hearing just various noises, whether it was something outside or my ice machine or um, the air conditioning clicking on it, I would just like wake up with a start. And I had a terrible night's sleep for the first few nights. And then um, I got a recommendation from all of you really on Snapchat for this sound machine. So it's been great now that I have that. Um, and I don't, I've been also using an, a sleep mask at night. Um, so that helps too, but I have gotten used to it. Being a homeowner is great. Um, it definitely, it, I guess it feels real. It's still, I'm very blessed. I'll say that it's, it sort of feels like I'm living in a hotel right now, which is sort of a strange thing to say. Um, because like, I don't have, I don't have furniture yet. It just, that will, that will be great. Once I have furniture, um, I think I'll feel more like a homeowner. It's just very sparse right now. It's still like I'm in the moving process. Okay, let's see. If you were to invest in one handbag right now, what would it be? Now this is one I didn't have to think about at all. If you followed me on any other channel, you'll know that I'm obsessed with Mark Cross bags right now. It's a brand from way back when. I wanna say like the 30s, but I think they actually started in like 1845. But um, they got really popular for handbags and luggage in I think the 20s and 30s. Um, and it basically, they just look like little suitcases. They're like little box box bags and they're so great. I love a good structured bag. That's what I always try to go for is something that won't collapse and fall in on itself. A lot of Celine bags do that if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the Mark Cross camera bag and the box bag, I think it's the Grace is what it's called, are fabulous and I'm dying to get my hands on either one of those. So what are some of your favorite investment pieces and what are some that you regret? Well, let's just take a little look in my closet, shall we? It's gonna be interesting. Um, favorite investment pieces. These shoes are destroyed, and the lighting is bad in here, so. Um, these shoes are destroyed by how much I've worn them. They are Givenchy, I mean, just look. They look actually terrible. 
um, but I got them like four years ago and they've been the best neutral sandal I've ever had. I wear them constantly. I probably need to get rid of them soon, but I got them on sale. I think I got them, I want to say they were on the Netta Porter sale and I got them for like 600, which was still quite an investment, but they were worth every penny. I've worn them so much. So that's one. Let's see what else. Bags are obviously always a great investment. This was one I actually got for Christmas. Clearly neutrals are my jam, um, but I got this for Christmas, so technically I didn't invest in it, but my mom did find it on sale, or I found it for her and sent her a link to it. Um, but this color has been super useful in my closet, and so that was totally, totally worth the splurge. And then boots are always a great investment. I have quite a few. The all of the winter boots are in my guest room, but those are really great. Now, I probably don't even have the ones that I regret anymore, but there are, I did a video, I wanna say I did a video on this sort of recently, like in the last six months, I feel like. I did a video on the items that I've splurged on and felt like it was a mistake. Um, so maybe check that. Let me, I'm trying to peruse anything. I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head what I regret, um, but check out that video because those were pretty accurate. Um, one thing I have regretted in the past is buying bags that don't have textured leather because they scratch so easily. I have one Chanel bag that is not the caviar leather that they have. The rest of my bags are. Um, and it is so torn up and I don't even wear it that much and I just, it, physically hurts me to think of how much damage has been caused and I haven't even worn it all that much. <laughs> so definitely try to avoid buying something um, where the, or buy a handbag if you're gonna invest in one that has smooth leather that could scratch easily. You'll be very sad. Okay, let's see. It's kind of hot in here. Maybe I'm wearing myself out <laughs> holding the tripod. Um, would love to hear more about your Biologique Recherche products if you're still using them. Yes. Um, really only one though. So I first discovered these products by a facialist I went to at Joanna Check here in Dallas. And um, I have really sensitive skin, so I don't use a ton of products. I have a very simple skincare routine. But she did recommend that for, because I don't know if you can tell, but I have some kind of, it looks like brown spots, so maybe from sun exposure, but to even out skin tone and balance pH, she recommended an exfoliating toner. And she sent me home with this, and it's the P50B1970 lotion. It's, it feels like a toner, it doesn't feel like an exfoliator, but she said, and on the back it says, um, that it gently exfoliates your skin every day. So it's something, it's an exfoliating product that you can use every day as a toner. Um, and it's great for balancing your pH, which I need a lot of since I work out so much. Um, and I do have the face wash. I think it's like, it's called like cleansing milk or something. I always take it with me when I travel. It's, um, I, it's a small size of it, but the only thing that I didn't like about it was that it doesn't wash off your makeup. So I'd have to like wipe my makeup off and then wash my face, which irritates me sometimes. <laughs> I like quick processes. All right, so those are really the only products that I've used from that line, but I do use the toner every day. Um, how do you get your hair done and maintain the color you have between appointments and how often do you go? So this is a good time for me to give a shout out to my main man, Monty. He works at Form Salon. Um, he owns his own business and he's fantastic, especially with blonde hair. Um, from what I remember him telling me when I was there last and asking him about this, he, he foils my whole head. It's an all over highlight situation. It's not all over color. It's always all over highlights because I don't like to go very often. And so I don't want it to be too noticeable when I have roots. And so that's the best way to um, accomplish that. Also, I should mention, I have very fair hair as it is. So my hair easily dyes blonde um, and stays blonde since it is blonde. I just like to get it brighter and more platinum but he um, does my whole head. He uses Olaplex, which I don't know exactly what that is, if that's different from toner, but he uses that, he uses a toner, 
Um, he brightens up my hairline with something else that he wipes on. And then in between appointments, one sec. In between appointments, I use this purple conditioner. And you've, if you've followed my YouTube for a while, you'll know that I've mentioned two others aside from this. This is the best one I've tried. Um, and it's the most, the newest one I've tried. Um, but I've tried the Oribe one. I've tried the Shu Yumero one was the first one he recommended. And then this came out and he was like, you've got to get this. Um, and it's true. It really <laughs> makes your hair platinum. To, uh, takes out the brassiness if you have blonde hair, um, which means it won't turn like a super yellow caramel. Um, and if it does, I put this on for like eight to 10 minutes in the shower and all over my head and I'll step out and my hair has more of a platinum look to it. So definitely recommend getting this. I want to say it's $36 or something. It's not that expensive. So um, check it out if you're blonde and you want to make your hair more platinum. I've never heard you talk about your faith. Are you a believer of Jesus Christ? I am. Um, there are certain things that I don't really like to talk about on my blog or social channels. One of them is faith. One of them is politics, um, really current events. I like to avoid things like that because I don't want to alienate people in any way. Um, I want everyone to be excited to follow me and feel included and I just, it's not really anything about preserving my, I don't know, whatever, but I just prefer not to bring up those topics personally on my channels. I totally respect anyone that wants to, um, but I definitely have before um, on my blog talked about how I went to Bible study and go to church and do all that stuff. So I definitely am, um, but it's just not something I like to talk about a lot. So what is your favorite fine jewelry? Yearman doesn't count. Love that because I actually don't wear any ear men. Um, not knocking people who do, it's just not my style. But um, honestly, most of the fine jewelry that I have is stuff that's been gifted to me by family members, uh, like family heirlooms. I've really never purchased fine jewelry for myself, um, but some some brands that I really like are Mar Marco Bichigo, um, Roberto Cohen, um, I really like those gold pieces. They're just stunning. And the Roberto Cohen necklaces, the Diamond Station necklaces, are so pretty. Just simple. I, I, prefer, I prefer simple. I don't like anything bulky. I don't wear a lot of bracelets. I really, I mean, these are fun, but they're statement earrings. But generally, I just wear diamond studs and that's it. Um, but as far as if you're looking for like diamond rings and fancy stuff like that, I actually would avoid any of the brand name places like Cartier. Um, and while I'd love to own all of it, it's great. It's ridiculously marked up. I would recommend going to smaller boutique jewelry places. Like I know that my mom has a couple favorites in Dallas, um, and in Carmel, and I don't know what they are, but I'll find out and link them below. Um, but it's more of a personal experience. It's unique stuff. It's not going to be something that everybody has like a Cartier love ring, that kind of stuff. Let's see, what is your daytime skincare routine? It's very simple. I actually have a video on my nighttime skincare routine that's a lot more products. But my daycare, or daycare, my day skincare routine, daytime skin, I can't talk. Um, I always put on La Mer right after I shower. I'm actually talking about this on the blog tomorrow. It's one of my tried and true favorite products of all time. I've used it since at least freshman year of college, if not before then. Uh, but it's great. So La Mer's gel cream I use every day, right after I shower so it has time to absorb in my skin. And then right before I put on my makeup, I apply sunscreen. And I've been using this La Roche Posay, um, and it's really great, it's lightweight, I don't feel like it leaves a big sheen on my skin. Um, the bottle is tiny, so for 20 bucks, kind of a lot for a tiny little bottle, but I love it and it doesn't break me out or irritate my skin in any way. I've been doing BBG for a while now and have noticed my knees really bother me post-workout. I remember you saying something similar. How did you combat that? So one thing to do would be to modify your workouts. So as you get further and further into BBG 1.0, there are more and more jumping things like jump lunges, box jumps, um, jump squats, I mean all kinds of jumps that put a lot of pressure on your knees. It's a lot of shock um, to your knees. So 
You can modify, do regular squats. Um, what I've done, if I notice that that's bothering me, I'll just go back through a couple weeks before and find another workout from that day. So like legs day, I'll find another workout that I like better that's not as harmful on my knees. So maybe it's like the medicine ball squat, the crab walk, I think is what she calls it. Um, and so I just like replace it with that. Um, just modify your workouts, but also definitely short stretch. That's really important after your workout, really before and after. And then if you're wanting to kind of recover, recovery, uh, take a bath with Epsom salts. Um, apparently it helps a lot. I've been doing it. I don't know if it actually does, but I try. <laughs> okay, best place to get a manicure in Dallas, also favorite boutique. So I've tried a bunch of manicure places and I've bopped around from several, um, but lately I've been really liking one that's close to my house. One for convenience, the factor of that is great, but they also do an excellent job and it's never really too busy when I go. So I really enjoy that and nobody talks to me. It's the best. <laughs> I just want to lay there and enjoy and get massaged by the chair. I really don't want to have a conversation when I'm at a spa. And so they respect that. Also, I went in right before my trip to California and I had to make it really fast because I'd be back for that stupid night stand delivery that didn't end up happening. And they were so nice and really helped me out. And they even had two women working on my hands at the same time. I felt really bad, but they were awesome. And it's called Charming Nails. I think it's like Lemon and West Side in Dallas, um, but it's great. So check it out. And then Boutiques. Um, there are several. I mean, if you can even consider 4510 a boutique, it's almost a department store, but I love it. It's the best. Um, Canary is really great over on West Lovers. Elements is also great. Let's see. There's a lot of new stuff on Knox Henderson too. I haven't really been over there since I moved because that's actually where I used to live. Um, but definitely check out that area if you're new to Dallas. Do you blow dry your hair after every shower? No, only when I know I'm gonna be going somewhere. So, I mean, or shooting something like this. Um, if I hadn't been shooting today, I would definitely not have. Whenever I have free time and just hang out at home, like if I'm not doing anything tomorrow, definitely won't. Um, I know it's not great for your hair to have heat on it all the time. So I do try and take a couple days off a week from doing that, but generally I'm working on content. So I do need to blow dry my hair. Okay. I'd love to hear a recap of your B-Day trip and a quick life update, how things are going in general. So my birthday was really fun. I had eight of my friends fly out to California with me and we stayed in two separate villas and that was a lovely gift for my grandmother. She has a timeshare out there at the Four Seasons Aviara and I've been going there for nearly two decades. Um, we go. Okay, I have no idea what just happened, so I had to start over, or not, I'm not starting over, but um, uh, I don't know what happened. Anyway, I was talking about Aviara. So my grandparents um, got involved in this timeshare at Four Seasons, Aviara in Carlsbad, and have had it for 20 years. So we've been all going as a family for that long. And for my 30th, she was so sweet and generous and let me take some of my friends out there. So we all got our own flights and then got there and just had a great time. We just laid out at the pool, went out to dinner, just really chill. I just wanted something relaxing. There's nothing like laying out at a pool and not sweating to death like you do in Texas. So it was a really nice break, I think, for everybody. Um, life update. I don't really know what else is new. I mean, the house has sort of taken over my life. Um, I'm hoping to get back down to Austin soon. I feel like it's been forever since I've been there. I also would really love to plan a trip because after that California trip, there is nothing on my calendars. So I'm getting the travel bug. Um, and while I love Aviara, it's fabulous and I love going every year. I, I always like to go somewhere new every year and I've not done that yet. So <laughs> I'm getting the itch. I wanna do that. Um, let's see where to go. Can you share your best three purchases lately in beauty, home, and fashion? The thing about me with beauty is I really, as much makeup as I have, I get gifted a lot of that stuff from brands, but I pretty much have a routine that I stick to every day. I have never changed the way I've done my makeup since college. So um, if you wanna find out what that is, there's also a video for that on YouTube. So 
look for my everyday makeup routine. Um, beauty discoveries, this is tough. Oh, I didn't buy this, but it's one of my favorites. Maybe I'll mention that. Um, wait, sorry y'all. So I didn't buy this, but it is a new beauty discovery that I'm really liking. I got this in the mail from First Aid Beauty and it's an instant oatmeal mask. And if you followed me on Snapchat, you'll know it smells like oatmeal cookies. And I wanted to like scoop it off and eat it off my face. That's how good it smelled. It leaves your skin buttery soft, just a fun mask to throw on once a week, but it smells delicious. So that's a beauty one. <laughs> okay, let's see what else. We could do fashion. That's usually pretty easy. Let's go back in the closet, see what's going on there. Um, well, since the Nordstrom anniversary sale is happening right now, I would say my most recent favorite purchase. Oh wait, no, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a total lie. This is my favorite purchase. Hold on. This Dolce & Gabbana skirt, it's so pretty and it just reminds me of Italy and I'm so excited I got it. Um, I need to wear it again since I shot it, but I think it's so beautiful. I just love the colors. I think it'll be a great thing to have for a long time. I love their prints, you really can't beat those. And then home, home stuffs. Ooh, maybe my nightstands. Those are really fun. I'll show you these. Aren't they pretty? I love them. I think they're so pretty and I love just how white my room is becoming. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Okay. Sorry for all the moving around. Hopefully y'all aren't totally bothered by that. Oh no. Ah, okay. And I'm like off center. Uh oh. Um, let's see. There are so many bars to choose from. Lara, RX, Kind, Cliff. Which ones do you like most and why? Um, I did try a lot of them, specifically RX and Lara bars because of Whole30 when I did it in January, because both of those are Whole30 approved. And while I really liked the flavors of Lara bar, I really liked how the RX bar felt heavier in my stomach. Like I felt like it filled me up a little bit more. Like I could eat the Lara bar in two seconds and like forget about it and eat another one. Um, RX bars just kind of have a little bit of a harder consistency. You kind of have to, they're kind of chewy. Um, whereas the Lara bars sort of crumble. Um, I just liked that feeling, if that makes sense, that you feel more full. Um, because that was one of the things you're not supposed to do is snack on Whole30. But the flavors of Lara Bar are great. The other ones that you mentioned, the person who asked that question, I don't think are actually part of Whole30, so I haven't really tried the other ones. I know that Cliff Bar is not, because I've had those before and they're delicious, but they're actually not that good for you. How do you plan your budget? I struggle with trying to prioritize on how my money should be spent. Outfits, travel, cosmetics, savings, etc. I wish I had a really great explanation for you. Um, generally, I've been pretty good at managing my own finances. Now, um, when I first left my full-time job to do the blog, my mom definitely helped me out a little bit because I wasn't making as much as I thought I would. Um, but now that I'm doing really well, I've, I mean, my business has doubled or it doubled last year and it's gotten even better this year. Thank you video. I feel like that's helped me a lot, but, um, I really have done super well with the blog, which has been really great. And I'm really blessed and thankful for all of you um, for supporting me and following along. But as far as the house that I can tell you about, because I knew these purchases were going to be monumental. I'm not the kind of person that just buys a handbag on an everyday basis. I usually try to ask for those for a gift. Like, like for example, this year for my 30th, my mom gifted me the dresser that I want in my living room um, because it's something that I wouldn't normally want to spend myself because it's pricier. Um, and so I usually try and reserve those things for um, like holiday or birthday gifts um, because it kind of hurts me physically to spend my own money on things like that. But as far as planning a budget for my house, I actually have an Excel spreadsheet where I listed all of the items that I still like that I need to buy, the priority level, the estimated or exact price if I had it, um, and whether I'd purchased it or not. So it's been a good way to see, like for a for, for example, for a course, 
for example, I obviously needed to get a mattress and a bed immediately. Um, so that was the top of the list. I needed to get light fixtures because I wanted an electrician to be here to do it. Unfortunately, those that didn't happen on time. They just haven't gotten here yet. Um, but there are certain things that are obviously super high priority. Alarm system. What else? Uh, you know, internet, all of that kind of stuff. Um, that's really important to have when you're moving into a new home. And then the other stuff like dining tables, don't really need those right away. Haven't even thought about them, haven't even ordered them. Um, although sort of a mistake because I have nowhere to sit. <laughs> but just make a list if you are really concerned with your budget, make a list of your priorities. Also go through, if you have a standard nine to five job, you probably have a salary versus hourly. So you know how much you're making every month. So you can go through and see how much you're willing to dedicate that to your outfits or travel um, or how much you're going to need to put into savings if you want a certain amount at the end of the year. Um, so you may just have to do take stock. Take stock of your bank account. Take stock of what you're making each month. It's a little hard for me because I make a different amount every month. Some months I make a certain amount. Some months I make way less, way more. Um, so it just totally depends for me. That's why it's hard for me to budget. Um, I just sort of have to be careful sometimes, but take stock, use an Excel sheet. That helps me. Okay. Will you do what your friend did regarding friends, regarding friends, readers posting where they live to connect with others. The only two women who replied to that thread were married. I want single friends in Houston. So to reference this, um, I mentioned in my newsletter, I think that my friend Danielle Moss, who is one of the co-founders of the Every Girl, she has her own blog as well. Um, she did a post, I want to say last week or in the last couple weeks, about um, connecting her readers. So she said that she's had a lot of uh, readers. Sorry, I can't even talk. I need to take a sip of water. Um, that she's had a lot of readers connect because of her blog. So she did this blog post that asked her all of her readers to comment on the post with their city so other people could find them and connect and get to know each other. The reason for that is they obviously have a common thread. They're either interested in fashion, interior design, dogs, whatever it might be. Um, there's a common link there. So it was a really great idea and she had, she had so many comments and it, it just, I thought it was great. But as this girl's saying, all of the two that mentioned they were in Houston were married. So I get that. Um, I'm definitely not going to totally steal Danielle's idea unless I ask her, but it is a great idea. Um, and especially since I'm from Texas, I've lived in Houston, Dallas, and Austin, and I think a large portion of my readership is in Texas, so that would be beneficial for you guys. Um, but let me talk to her and I'll get back to you on that. Um, let's see, where do you get your outfit and style inspiration? Really everywhere, Pinterest, magazines, other bloggers, um, but probably most of the time, it's because I'm literally on the computer all day, every day, combing through new arrivals on my favorite shopping websites. Um, I'm always seeing what's on trend. I'm always reading articles on Vogue and Harper's Bazaar and finding out what's new and hot. And so that really helps me. Plus I just know what I like. I definitely wouldn't buy something just because it's on trend. I'm, I'm not trying to wear all the trends. So <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't do that on a regular basis. I wish I could pull that off, I, but I don't. I live in Dallas, Texas. Um, but I, I just buy what I like. I don't really know what else to say about that. Um, which celebrity would you switch closets with? That's easy. Olivia Palermo. I just like everything she wears. I can't be as crazy as her though. Sometimes she has like crazy mixed prints and I don't know, it's a little too much, but the way she puts everything together, it looks so effortless and awesome. So how did you organize your closet? Did you organize your tops by type or by color? Actually by both. Let's go look. So if you look here, you'll see that it's white to black and then I have other colors over here. Um, but I also have them tanks, tees, long sleeves. I don't even know if I'm showing this correctly. There you go. Tanks, short sleeve tees and other short sleeve tops long sleeves, and then we get to the black tanks. These are crop tops, but that's pretty much how I've 
um, organize that. I do the same with my jeans. So the black to white over there. And then back here are my leggings. Everything's sort of color coded. I need to work on this section though, cause I got a lot of dry cleaning back. Um, I'm about to move to Austin. Can you share your favorite nail places? Where to grab a margarita, hidden gems. So <laughs> I don't know if it's the best nail place in town, but my mom and I always go and Alexander too. We always go to Terrytown Nails. It's just where we, I grew up on Windsor Road in Austin in Terrytown, and so it was right down the street. So we always went there and we still do. We don't even live over there anymore, but it's just sort of a, a nostalgic place. Um, margaritas, I always go to Maudie's when I'm in town. It's sort of a chain now. There are so many locations all over Austin, but I love, it's the best Tex-Mex in my opinion. Matt's El Rancho is really good too, if you want a different vibe, but I love Maudie's. It's sort of a hole in the wall, but the food is incredible. Get the Diablo queso and the cheese enchiladas. Perfecto. Um, and a spicy margarita. So good. Um, hidden gems. If you're not from Austin, you wouldn't know about Snow Beach probably, but it's the best damn snow cones in the entire world. <laughs> I love them. They have like a hundred flavors. You could put ice cream, cream, caramel, anything you want on them. It's incredible. How did you deal with financial uncertainty when starting this influencer business? Well, when I started the blog, there wasn't a way to make money. Reward style didn't exist. I started my blog in January of 2011. So reward style launched, I think in June of that same year. Um, so at the time it was literally just a hobby. I didn't start it to make money. I was starting it because I was going through, or I'd just gone through a bad breakup. I was living in Houston. I was working, but I just needed a creative outlet. Um, and so I started it. And then later, reward style came and I started making money. So that's great. Um, as far as, I can kind of take it a step further. When I left, I didn't leave my full-time job until I was making enough to where I could figure it out um, on my own. So I obviously didn't want to go off on my own before I could support myself. And like I said earlier, my mom still helped me out a little bit right after that. I even lived in the townhouse that she owns for quite a while, which has helped me save, save up a bunch of money. Um, so thanks mom. But yeah, so definitely don't, <laughs> if you don't have money to fall back on, like working full time, like if you're not working full or if, don't quit your job until you're making enough money is all I would say. Um, cause I struggled with that a little bit. Um, I would not just kind of leave your job to do something. I would put your toes in the water, test it out, make sure it's right for you. If you still even want to do it. So many bloggers I know that started when I started have quit blogging since then. So, and maybe working at other jobs. So maybe just do that. Um, are you going to take photos of your favorite rooms in your new home and share the paint colors, also the exterior? I've actually already done that. Um, not for everywhere, but I've done that for the exterior of the house, the office, I wanna say the kitchen and the guest room and the living room. And it's in a blog post called, I think it's progress photos of the new house, but you can find it on my blog, thestylescribe.com in the style section under at home. If you click on that, it's, I want to say three or four posts back, um, but it features all of the paint colors. So you can check that out now. Once I do room reveals, which I will be doing, I'll show off all of the different rooms once they're finished and have all the furniture and all that stuff. And I'll be able to link everything and share all of the details. So stay tuned for that. I see you enjoy hostessing. What are some good party food and cocktail ideas for an informal party with friends? I'm a big fan of the cheese plate. Cheese and charcuterie all the way. It's super easy to do. And now, especially with things like Trader Joe's and Central Market, you can find really gourmet cheeses and cheese balls. The Central Market cheese balls are the best. <laughs> They're rolled in pine nuts, which are like my favorite things ever. Um, and then also at Trader Joe's, they have like truffled brie. Oh my God, it's just so good. It's so decadent. So I love a good cheese plate. That's pretty much my go-to. You can add fruit to it grapes, figs, fig jam, get some fig jam. Um, so that's great. Same qu or question from the same person. Also, what are some nice hostess gifts to give when invited to a party? Um, if it's somebody you are very close with and want to get them something really nice, I would suggest some monogrammed cocktail napkins or a hand towel, guest towel. Um, you could do candles, you could bring wine, you could bring 
flowers, options are endless. So, um, what is your best advice for purchasing your first home? Advice on any part of the process is appreciated. For me, I wish I'd taken more time. I was getting sort of antsy and ready to move. Um, and I feel like if I'd waited three more months, so many, so many more houses popped up on the market in this neighborhood that I looked in, um, if I just waited, but I was too eager <laughs> and I would just do your research, look at a hundred houses, look at so many houses, um, and get all of your options. That's my biggest, biggest recommendation. How do you stay motivated to stick with BBG and mainly clean eating? Okay, now I really have to take a sip of water. I joked about it earlier, but. Ugh. <laughs> how do you stay motivated to stick with BBG and mainly clean eating? And how do you force yourself to get back on track after a vacation? So I pretty much always worked out, but I've, I've like gotten in ruts and like gotten sick of a workout and stopped going. Like for example, when I was doing Pure Bar, which I loved, I was doing it like five days a week, but it's basically the same class every day. So I got burnt out on that after doing it for about a year and a half, I think two years maybe. Um, but what is great about BBG is that it's different every single day you do it. It's three days a week. If you get to BBG 2.0, it's four days a week, but the fourth day is optional. Um, so it's totally doable. It's anyone can do it. I mean, I obviously have a flexible schedule, so I'm not saying that Anyone can spend as much time as I do working out, but even when I worked full time, I'd wake up at 5.30 and go work out. I was not doing BBG. I don't know how hard that would be to do that early in the morning, but um, I've always just sort of made it my point to make it my routine. Um, I try not to think of it as a chore or something that I have to do, but it's something that's helped me um, look better in my clothes and because of what I do it's so easy for me to catch things like when I'm shooting photos I'm like oh I wish I hadn't eaten that last weekend like I look better it's it's kind of a harsh critique um you're always your your worst critic I think that's what, I don't know what the, the, the quote is but anyway you're your harshest critic um but definitely have just made it my routine and that's helped a lot Mondays I do BBG, Wednesdays I do BBG, and Friday I do BBG. And then Tuesday, Thursdays I always do flywheel. And that's it. And then on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday I might throw in another workout, but it really depends on my social activities for that weekend. As far as eating, this has been a, rail, a roller coaster for me, not a railroad. Um, that's where I've had the most trouble. For the amount I work out, I should be very, very fit and probably thin. Um, but I just love food so much. It's, I just can't help it. And I, sorry, mom, I'm throwing you under the bus. <laughs> I like volume. I like, I like inhale my food. I am a human disposal and my mom's sort of like that too. Um, we just, we need volume, whether it's an enormous plate of vegetables or a huge salad or, um, a bowl of pasta. Like I like volume. I'm not one of those people that can have like three bites of something and put it away. Like if it's sitting in front of me, I'm going to eat all of it. So, um, lately I've been trying to focus on my portions and eating smaller meals throughout the day so that by lunchtime, I'm not ravenous and shoveling everything in my mouth. Um, I do let myself go on vacation. <laughs> like in California, I was eating like pizzas and grilled cheeses and pastas, but it was my birthday and I was on vacation. Um, it is hard, and, but I do work out when I'm on vacation. I really don't take a break from that. I always try and still do my BBG. Luckily there was a gym there. That's not always the case, but what's great about BBG is you can modify it all to do it wherever without equipment. A lot of it is using your own body weight. So that's what I recommend doing. If you travel a lot or work from home and you can work out at home, uh, BBG is great for that because I don't have to um, stop my routine just because I'm traveling. I just bring my little booklet with me and then I do it. Um, as far as food goes though, I usually, if I'm on vacation, I'll come back and let myself have one just totally ratchet day of terrible eating. I'm gonna go to Whataburger, I'll get Slurpee or ice cream or something and then start the next day. Just kind of <laughs> like a reverse detox, if you will, um, because Usually I don't eat that stuff. Um, and so if I let myself just kind of eat whatever I want one day after I'm done with vacation, then I'm like, okay, now I can start. 
So I don't know if that's the healthiest thing to do, but I, that's what I do. Okay. Seems you have a family lineage of great fashion and style. I love seeing glimpses of your mother and grandmother. Do you have any heirloom tips that have been passed on to you? Like how to dress for a certain occasion, selecting an investment piece. Um, I think I would have thought of this before I started shooting this. Um, I mean, I just, I watched my mom. She and I have such similar silhouettes, so definitely um, picking the right silhouettes for my body. I think um, I learned that from her. It's surprising how many people do not know how to dress for their figure, and it's, it's not easy. Um, but because my mom always knew how to, and I have a similar figure, I just learned that from her. So that was great. Um, dressing for your figure and body type is a tough business, but it's the best way to look your best. Um, like I could never wear a body con dress, like no thanks, <laughs> but I'm all about the fit and flair, hide those hips. Um, but that's really great. Um, let's see, from fashion stuff, I've learned a lot in terms of like personality and just being kind of gracious and appreciative and nice to people, hopefully. <laughs> I'm definitely not as nice as my mom and grandmother, but I try. I try. It did it again. I don't know what happened. Um, but I don't know. That's just, that's one thing I thought of. And then the jewelry comment I made earlier about not going to like a brand name place, but finding stuff at um, an actual jeweler, um, like a boutique, because uh, the prices are different and you'll just get better, more unique stuff. Um, if I think of anything else, I will add to that. How do you store your over the knee Stuart Weitzman boots? I would show you, but I have to walk all the way around the house and just don't, you don't need to see all of that right now. Uh, but literally not in the best way. They're sitting and folded over each other. That's sort of how all of my winter boots are. However, I did get these little gold clips that you hold at the top or put at the top of the boots. This really only works for sturdy boots or some boots with structure because the Stuart Weitzman over the knee boots are just leather. They just flimsy and fall over. Um, but these clips help keep things like cowboy boots and um, knee-high boots particularly. That's where they work the best. Um, hold them together so they don't fall over. So you check those out. If I can find some online, I'll link them below. Let's see. What shampoo do you use every day after you work out? Well, I actually don't shampoo every day. I shampoo probably three or four days a week, but I definitely have to get in the shower. If you've seen me on Snapchat, I am a sweaty, sweaty person. I sweat a lot when I work out. Um, it amazes me how much more I sweat than other people when I'm at flywheel. I feel like every time everyone just like walks out, people may be red, but like my hair is dripping. I'm dripping sweat. Um, and so I always have to at least get in the shower and rinse my hair out, but um, I try not to wash it every day because it will pull the color from my hair. It'll also make it more yellow, which means I'll have to use that um, toner I showed you guys. It's over here, actually. Um, so I probably use it three or four times a week, but right now this is what I'm on. I'm, I'm a big fan of Ori Bay. I love all of their products. Right now I'm using the Gold Lust Repair and Restore Shampoo. Um, all of the bottles are small. I wish they made bigger ones that weren't so expensive, <laughs> but um, I've really enjoyed this. It lathers up a lot, like unlike the other Ori Bay products. That's sort of why I got off of Ori Bay for a while. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Um, but I didn't like how my hair wasn't sudsing. It like felt, it was difficult to wash my hair. What is the best workout for flat abs? Um, I wouldn't say there's one specific one because you have like three or four different portions of your abdominals. There's like the top, the middle, the bottom, and then your lower abs, um, which is what BBG targets. So just to give you an example. Okay, where am I? Here we go. Um, here's some, you can see, uh, they're just lots of different ones. Also the, t the side abs. I mean, there are just so many different um, ab workouts and they all target different areas. There's not like a one, one all be all situation. Like here's from BBG one, the one I just showed you is BBG two. Um, but so many different workouts. That's why I like BBG is that even on days where I don't have a scheduled BBG, like say I just do flywheel, but want to do something a little bit more, I can just pull one of these up and do a few of the ab exercises. It's just really nice to have 
like a deck, something ready that I can look at and just pull workouts from. Okay. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. Um, let's see. Are there any tips you can give someone for shopping on a budget in Dallas? Um, I honestly never shop in stores. It's sad. Um, I love to go in there for inspiration, but as a blogger, I mean, I'm totally programmed to shop online now. Um, but if you're looking for fun and expensive boutiques, check out the Gypsy Wagon. That's really cute. It's off of Henderson. It's really cute. And they have so many um, like party favors and party decor as well as clothes and accessories. They have great stationery. Um, and then Melanie Gale is one in Snyder Plaza. There are a couple others in Snyder Plaza that I'm not as familiar with, but I know they have boutiques there. What brand are your current hair tools? I have a couple different ones. My curling iron that I use today is by Sultra. I don't know if you can see that. Sultra. And then I really only use a hair dryer other than that. I have a straightener and I have another curling iron as well, but I just don't use them very often. And my curling, my curling iron. Ah, <laughs> I'm losing steam y'all and I have so many to go. Um, I have this Dyson Supersonic hair dryer, which I'm also talking about in Sundays, no. Sunday's, I don't know if that's tomorrow, no. Sunday's blog post. So check back on my thoughts about this because it's amazing, but um, those are the two brands that I use. Okay, so I have one more. Are you currently living the life you always dreamed of? Do you wish anything was different? Of course I wish things were different. <laughs> not to make that, it was not a stupid question, but um, I'm, I will say I'm very blessed. I'm thankful to have a very supportive family, loving family and amazing friends. Um, I love what I do for a living. It's so much fun. I love being able to connect with you guys um, and share my favorite things. Um, I love my new house. Lots of things are great, but I mean, there are certainly things about my life that aren't always fabulous, and certainly my life is not fabulous 50% of the time even. Um, but generally, life is good at the moment. So I'm happy with how the house turned out. There were some bumps in the road, um, but business is on the up and up. Family's good, can't complain about that. Friends are awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's, I guess that's my answer to that. But there's all, there are always things that can be improved, things that can be better. Um, but I just try to take each day at a time and live life to the fullest and um, just appreciate what God has blessed me with. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I hope you enjoyed this q and I'm hoping after this there won't be any more Q&As for a while just because I want to do so many other um, videos on here that are unrelated to questions. So stay tuned for that. Again, thank you for following along and sticking with me. <laughs>